Hello Aquarius, welcome to your tarot reading. Um, first of all, um, I feel like this is a love reading. All the cards that have uh, fallen out when I was shuffling, they're all here. There's a lot of water energy and a lot of fire, so a lot of passion, a lot of um, emotions, deep emotions, deep passion being stirred here. And so I feel like this is going to be a love reading. And um, I saw two images for you, and I feel like the first image deals with the first six cards, and then the second image might deal more with the last four cards, okay? So um, let me just um, talk to you about the first image that I saw. So I see this little bee. He's hovering, you know, uh, near this field of flowers, okay? And he scopes out two flowers. Two of them, they're, they're both tulips. One is like reddish, orangey um, in color. It's, it's open and um, it's on the left side. The other one is purple, like purple and blue. They're both equally beautiful, but the one that's purple and blue is a little bit closed off, okay? So they're side by side. One is open, one is closed off, and they're both kind of swaying in the breeze and the bee is hovering above it. And the bee wants to open or like wants to land in on the purple and uh, blue one, the one that's less open. And he's trying to dig his way through all the different petals so that he can get to the center because, you know, bees are pollinators, of course. And so he's burrowing himself in there and he kind of disappears from underneath the petals. And then like five minutes later, he reemerges. And then I feel like what's going through his head was, what am I doing? The other uh, flower is open, it's ready, it's, it's prepared for me. Why am I burrowing my, my, my head in this one? Why am I wasting my effort? Why am I digging my way through? It's clearly not ready or, you know, whatever the situation might be. So then he burrows himself out, then he flies over to the other um, tulip and he, you know, does his thing pollinating or whatever. And then uh, the scene cuts out, okay? so. What I'm seeing right off the bat is um, I feel like there's something that you're you're really, really, really pushing for. You want a specific outcome. You have it in your head how it's going to play out. And I feel like once a fixed sign makes up their mind of something they want to do, a course of action, an event, once you plan things, you never renege on your promises. You never back out on your plans. And, you know, that's very admirable, but it, it also creates a situation where your, um, your, your blinders are on and you're single handedly just, you know, trying against all odds to make something happen because you've already envisioned, envisioned it in your mind how it's going to come to be. And so I feel like there is a process here of um i don't want to say giving up because i feel like you know giving up for an aquarius is never an option right um i feel like it's it's a little bit more like letting things be okay not fighting against the tides not being so adamant about controlling a situation battling it out for a specific outcome just because you've already envisioned in your mind that's the outcome and you're not making room or making allowances for other outcomes to come into the picture so the whole process about you know readjusting readjusting expectations realigning yourself going towards something that is ready for you going towards something that is um meant for you rather than burrowing yourself into a situation and finding yourself in the dark finding yourself lost finding yourself you know um like that sense of claustrophobia being in a dark confined space it starts to kick in and it gives you guys a lot of anxiety so I feel like there's a, a dichotomy here. There's a place of love and abundance and light, okay? That open flower, it's red, it's ready, It's the time is right. Versus the blue and the purple. And it's closed off and you have to, you know, um, burrow yourself in there. And it's not an, a comfortable feeling. 
And so I'm seeing here that dichotomy is basically spelling out for you guys. The timing might, might not be right. It's almost like, yes, in some, in a sense, they're comparable, they're equal things, but one is ready for you and the other one is not. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that option is off the table. It just means that the time is not right. And when the time is not right and we're, you know, we're on universal time, right? We're not in a linear human time frame. When the time is not right, no matter how much you push for it, no matter how much you um, try to unravel it, it's not ready. And it won't be ready until it is the right time. And so I feel like there is a, a sense of you kind of coming into this realization that it might not be the right time. It might not be the right situation. It doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means that you kind of have to relinquish your idealized vision of what it could be. You have to relinquish control in a situation and you kind of have to let it go, okay? So I'm seeing a situation here and um, I definitely feel like this is like a, a love situation. And um, I'm sensing, I, I do feel the energy of two people here, okay? So we have the tower here and I wanted to clarify the tower. So I pulled out two cards. I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit. I've already seen what the cards are. Um, I'll talk about them in a little bit because I feel like I wanna piece together the story for you it, it hasn't been easy, okay? So uh, for Aquarius people, right now, there are a lot of things going through your mind when it comes to your financial foundation. And I feel like for many of you, some of you are kind of like this, nine of pentacles, on top of the world, self-sufficient, being able to take care of yourself, having a lot of savings, having a lot of income, having like a steady stream, of just you know financial abundance okay some of you are self-made some of you have dealt with a lot of heartache and you bury yourself in work you try not to feel the feels okay you try not to um, you know let things ruminate in your mind you try not to let the other person have that power that control over you so you bury yourself in work you bury yourself in hobbies you immerse yourself in other things and thank god they're like um, very productive things for your creative outlet for your energy and you try not to ruminate and think about the things and the person that hurt you and so you definitely um, were very productive with that time while you were grieving you made something out of yourself okay and now you're looking back at this legacy that you've created and you're just like i am so proud of myself i can't believe i did all of that while you know i was an emotional wreck while i was a mess and i feel like you're looking at it everything that you have created all your creations with a sense of like paternal maternal pride okay it's your love and joy it's your baby pretty much and so i feel like because of that you turn something that might have been like a, a heartache situation into something beyond your wildest dreams and it, ha it it left an imprint okay you left an imprint on it and you're very proud of yourself so you're in a space of financial abundance while others of you you are financially linked up with another person and I feel like there are a lot of worries for you guys uh, when it comes to your financial stability and um, funnily enough I mentioned that you know Aquarius is like the most independent sign of the zodiac you're self-made you're self-sufficient you're very very independent and I feel like the one sign from the universe, the one sign that you know you're in the wrong situation is if you are financially entangled with another person and you don't feel independent financially. That's one sure sign that you're in a wrong relationship because I feel that coming through. I feel a situation that is very entangled with another person. We have the green here and we have this infinity symbol and we have the juggling act 
and we have a financial foundation here with the tower that is fractured okay it's a situation where financially you're linked up with another person they're dependent on you i feel for certain things in the relationship but i feel like you are dependent on them for the finances and i feel like you're starting to see that this is a very very messy uh, arrangement and it's really hard to kind of come out of this unscathed and so you're plotting and you're planning and you're trying to figure out how to separate the assets how to demarcate you know um have like a clear separation when it comes to what is yours versus what is the other person but either way there is a situation here where the foundation is cracked where it cannot be rebuilt okay the tower breaks down things that are wobbly things that are built on faulty grounds things that have not been well thought out and things that have not been it was like um castle in the sky you know it, it was like um it, it wasn't stable it wasn't realistic it foundationally it was very very weak and more things got built on top of it even though it had a faulty foundation to begin with so i feel like there was a situation here where um being financially linked up with somebody really interfere with your freedom of movement really interfere with your free will and it interfered with your ability to come and go as you please and you're in this situation where you're plotting and planning how to extract yourself and it's getting messy okay um so that's that's the first thing and i feel like you know the energies are very extreme some of you totally uh, financially independent and others of you, uh, you're tied into a situation you want to leave, but financially, you're not really sure how things are going to go. And I do sense that in, you know, in due time, it's going to work its way out because you are already drawing your line in the sand and trying to separate your assets and trying to liquidate and trying to extract yourself. Okay, so I feel like the extraction process or the thoughts of it have already begun and you are taking actions to move yourself in the right direction or to extricate yourself from this situation, which is great. And then I'm also seeing as well, um, going back to the, the Aquarian stubbornness, okay? And um, I don't mean this in any type of a derogatory way because I feel like, you know, you're, you won't be you unless you are stubborn. Okay, and I feel like, you know, the, the worst thing you can tell an Aquarius is like, no, don't do that. Like, infringe upon their free will and tell them what to do and boss an Aquarius around and, and tell them, you know, these are, are, are things you're supposed to do and these are things you're not supposed to do. Like, tell them how to behave, uh, correct their behavior or, or things like that because those things can backfire. But what I, I feel coming through is you're coming into this month, you're keeping your impulses and you're keeping yourself in check. You're realizing in the past instances where your impulses um, have gotten you in trouble or have um, inadvertently come out in a way where it isolates you from other people, where it, um, it created like a, a rift between you and another person because of this impulse to want to rebel, to want to, you know, stubbornly do something, even though you know it wasn't good for you. It's like testing the water, okay? It's like a child touching a tea kettle and knowing that it's hot, but, you know, wanting to experience it for himself, how hot it is, okay? So it, it's, it's that situation where I feel a little bit like, you know, playing with fire, pushing buttons, wanting to get to the that limit wanting to see like what makes the other person tick and you know i feel like you're in the process of learning that when enough's enough and when not to you know ex over exert yourself or waste your energy or you know uh when when you're supposed to stop pushing for a specific outcome because something is not meant for you okay so i feel like there's a situation here 
where it's a lot about self-awareness. It's about, you know, maturing, understanding yourself, understanding that, you know, this is my chill out card, okay? This is somebody who is in a state of rest and relaxation. Um, this animal is drinking tea. So it's somebody who might be a tea lover, but I, I feel like it's a situation where you're finding your center, you're finding your Zen, you're, you're, being, you're in a state where you're just going to mellow out. You're not going to worry about things anymore. You're not going to ruminate over things. You have everything you need at your disposal and you're in a space where you are truly very content and very happy, okay? On top of that, you're wearing your crown. You're gaining your power back. You're not giving your energy, your resources, and your time to people that don't really matter, okay? So I feel like this is a month where you are definitely refilling your cup, okay? All the waters are um, coming back into this cup. This is kind of like the Ace of Cups in the making. It's the Four of Cups. And usually, I don't like this card. It indicates boredom. It indicates like, you know, lack of, um, lack of inspiration and just being in a situation where you're not appreciative of things. But I feel like this is not a good depiction of the card. But the way this is depicted in here is the Ace of Cups in the making, replenishing yourself. Okay, so going back to um the the images okay so i'm going to talk about the second image now what i and then i'll uh, talk a little bit more about these clarifiers so in the second image i see this woman she's in her yoga clothes she's sit sitting on a yoga mat in the lotus position and she has been you know meditating for quite some time and her mind is kind of wondering and she's like i wonder what that person's doing and um so what i saw was her third eye starts to open up okay and then there's like um a, a string it's sort of like a cord it, it goes from the third eye into like a great distance and then at the end of it there's this man okay um, I can't really make out what he looks like, but it's, I feel like he's wearing a business suit. It looks like a gray suit and he has like a blue tie. He's in his office and she's, you know, just checking up on him. And as soon as the, that, that cord connects to his third eye, he kind of opens up his eyes and he's all like, wait a minute, that felt strange. So I feel almost like you're connected to somebody you're you're you have this like um really really strong very succinct soul connection with another person and i feel like it is so strong where if you think about them they think about you if you wonder what they're doing they're probably getting you know those intuitive nudges that you're thinking about them and they likewise will wonder what you're up to so i feel like there's a very strong um like connection or pull or like a very strong soul connection between two people and so the scene cuts out and what i was feeling is i feel like there's a, a mutual reception here okay um and what i mean by that is let me talk about this card the tower so we have here a really big crack in the foundation okay and um, when we look at the tower, it's a situation where we're losing grip, we're um, gaining water, or like it's about to collapse into this body of water. We don't see anybody in it or in the tower in this card, but what it denotes to me is it's a situation where it's things have been fractured. You can't really rebuild from this, okay? You can't salvage it. It is falling into the ocean or it's falling into this body of water. It's sinking, it's going to disappear. And whatever effort we make to kind of subsidize it or bail it out or try to repair it or try to fix it, it's going to be in vain because at the end of the day, whenever it starts to sink, at the end of that, we're just not going to see it anymore, okay? So I feel like there's a situation that's, um, it was wobbly. It was very wobbly from the very beginning. And you knew this, Aquarius. 
you guys are smart you guys know when a situation is um unbalanced okay so i feel like from the very beginning from its advent it wasn't the the ideal condition okay it wasn't the right thing it wasn't it it, it was just never the right thing from the 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 very beginning it had faults it had cracks it had issues and here's where I feel like you're dealing with somebody like this and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, we all have flaws. We all have our baggage. We all have, you know, our conditioning and our behaviors that are not ideal. Okay. You're dealing with somebody that is far from perfect, but you really love this person. You saw all of their flaws. You saw their temper flare ups. You saw insincerity i feel like you know with the things that they did with the things that they said and i feel like you didn't care you you love this person anyways against your better judgment okay i feel like you really really cared about this person and i feel like from the very beginning at the 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 beginning of this relationship or this union or this situation it wasn't ideal. You saw the flaws. You saw that it couldn't have worked out. But I, f I almost feel like you, you went into it anyways because that soul connection was very, very strong. You felt it. And there were moments where you were very, very indecisive. We have here the Two of Pentacles. And this is the juggling act. This is sort of like, you know, weighing out the pros and cons, yes or no. Some days you feel like giving up, you know, throwing in the towel and walking the other way and never giving this person the time of day. And then other days you're just like, I just want us to be friends. I just want us to be in each other's lives. So I feel like you were very conflicted because you knew it was a faulty foundation, but the connection was very strong. And so it felt worthwhile. And I pulled out two cards for the tower to signify what it meant, okay? And what I have here is the hermit and I have the lovers. So this is the card of um, Virgo. This is the card of Gemini. So some of you might be dealing with a Virgo or a Gemini. And the hermit basically indicates to me, the hermit is about going inside, going within and i feel like there's a person here who is lacking in self-awareness there's a person here who's like they're so used to being on their own and they're so used to their independence and they're so used to having things their way and doing you know living for themselves and not having to deal with uh worrying about caring for showing affection towards another person that they didn't exhibit the signs that they were ever going to be a good relationship partner. Does that make sense? So I feel like you're dealing with somebody who puts themselves first. You're dealing with somebody who is, this is a sloth, okay? And um, I always think of like sloths as like an old man, okay? And um, this is not meant to be derogatory in any way when it comes to, you know, people in their age, okay? I I'm just saying like, that's just, the impression I, I usually get with a sloth and this old man is wearing like a hoodie okay so I, I feel almost like it's somebody who is not acting their biological age okay they might be um, old in years biologically they might be old but emotionally they're very 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 um, they're very immature and I feel like they live for themselves. I feel like you're dealing with someone who might be a little bit selfish. It's all about me and me and me. And then on the, the other side, on the flip side, and this might be another person. We have here the lovers. And this is a situation where, you know, I, I have that third eye, really strong emotional connection. It's like a very strong psychic connection between two people. And I feel like there might be an age difference. There might be a cultural difference because the two seahorses are, you know, different colors. Um, I'm also seeing a situation where the two people, they're joined. 
There is a soul contract here. They're joined together. They're supposed to learn something from one another. So the lesson, I feel like one person is supposed to learn to be patient and the other person is supposed to learn to reciprocate. It's supposed to learn to, you know, put others before themselves. Okay, so one person is supposed to give the other person the tools in order to better themselves. And unfortunately, I feel like you, Aquarius, are the ones that are supposed to give them the tools, the, the guidance on how to be a better person. Um, and then I also feel like that's why, in a way, I, I, I felt like you were constantly oscillating in and out like one foot out the door in this relationship even from the very beginning you were constantly thinking about like oh it's just so much easier for me to run away from this connection and then some days you wanted to be in the connection other days you wanted to be out it was very confusing and you know why it's very confusing because your soul understands that you have a soul contract with this person and your soul understands that you're going to get hurt in this relationship. And that's why you're constantly one foot out the door. Because you are so afraid of what your soul already knows. Does that make sense? So if you're wondering, you know, why am I feeling this way about this connection? Why am I like, um, as much as you love them, you can't 100% tolerate or put up with or, you know, feel comfortable committing to this person is because it's a karmic connection and you intuitively know that it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to be very difficult and it's up to the other person's free will whether or not they take what you offer, right? It, it's ultimately up to their free will. And they're in a state of mind where they're working on themselves. They're focused on themselves. They're emotionally stunted. I feel like they're emotionally immature. And I feel like because of it, they have not reached that state of self-awareness to be able to communicate to you how they feel, to be able to be on your level and to catch up to where you are and your soul intuitively knows this that it's going to end in a lot of heartache and that's why you have always been hesitant about investing 100 percent that's why from one day to the next you're constantly waffling like am i in or am i out it's because you understand that it's a challenging relationship and so despite the feelings, despite, you know, really wanting this relationship, I, I almost feel like it was too hard, okay? And so I'm sensing there is a situation here where you see this person for, for who they are, all of their faults, all of their bad traits, all of their, you know, I'm, I'm seeing somebody with um, like somebody who has a tantrum somebody who sulks somebody when they don't get their way they they like you know um get angry somebody who's um emotionally immature and somebody who's who's, who's like you know selfish and you see all of this but they also have redeeming qualities you know everyone has their re redeeming qualities and whatever it is that they really dislike about themselves, I feel like you find it endearing. You find it charming. You find it like human, okay? So like you're understand and you, you are very understanding and very accepting of this person in all of their faults, in all of their flaws. And I feel in a way, um, the way you feel about them more than makes up for everything that's lacking in this connection so i feel in a way your emotional response to this person might have been irrational does that make sense because i feel like your emotional response your emotions for this person was the one thing that carried the weight of this relationship and there was very little emotional uh 
reciprocity from their end. And I feel like you were made aware of it, okay? You were made aware of it. I definitely feel there's a really strong soul connection here. And I feel like, you know, it's two people admiring one another. You admire the other person a lot. You're looking up and the other person is like really, the, the other person cares about you. They, they do care about you. They want you to be okay. They want you to prosper. They want you to be happy. And they don't feel like they have anything left to give you. It's like you're, you're kind of like bringing colors back into their life. Okay? Like that ray of sunshine. Or like, you know, the, 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 the bright pastel thing that stands out in a uh, sea of lifelessness. Okay? The other person doesn't feel like they have anything to offer you. And as independent as you are, Aquarius, you don't need anything from anybody. But I feel like in this connection, you want that emotional reciprocity. And they're not in a position to give that to you, okay? And so that's what I'm seeing here. And I do feel overall there's a lot of regret there's a lot of like you know should have could have there's a lot of um it, it's sort of like with this tower card and the nine of pentacles i feel like you had no choice but to make yourself single to free yourself from this connection and work on yourself to replenish this Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is, is the, the brand new love or the great love, but it's more about self-love, okay? Um, you were very energetically and spiritually and emotionally drained from this connection. And you needed to take some time to replenish yourself. You might have spent, you know, the last three weeks, the last three months working on yourself, getting yourself to a better space to the point where you can kind of wave it goodbye and kind of sail off on your own getting your crown back not being in a situation where you're head over heels you know tumbling um i'm seeing like a an otter with a ball on his head or a seal i, I think they're seals with a ball on his nose, like, you know, doing tricks, and then the, the people giving them, uh, giving the, the seals fish. So it's like, I'm no longer um, entertaining this. I'm no longer doing tricks in order to, you know, please the audience, to please that person. I'm no longer engaging in it. I'm putting my crown back on, and, you know, like the queen or the king that I am, and I'm walking away from this situation. So it's like, you are waving goodbye because you're not giving up on anything Aquarius I feel like this was a karmic lesson that you and the other person needed to experience okay and I feel like the the signs have been there all along that it was a faulty foundation it was something that was rushed in it was something that was you know it, it was like your your emotional response to this person you, you both had a very strong connection and it's undeniable and I feel like it's definitely, you know, reciprocated, okay? It's definitely there, but like, you know, the, the two flowers, the two tulips, one was open and the other one was not. So no matter how much you try to burrow, no matter how much you try to pry it open, it just won't open because there's a time and a season for everything. And I feel like the timing for this relationship might not have been the opportune time, okay? Um, I was talking to the, uh, no, I did the Capricorn reading and I mentioned with Capricorn, um, it's um, Mercury retrograde during this entire month, okay? So for the month of November, we have a, a really strong Mercury retrograde period that we have to contend with and it's gonna last all month. And Mercury retrograde is a, a really good time for uh, problem solving actually. It's also a time where, you know, notoriously, um, a lot of situations, problems, people from our past start to come back. If they don't come back in physical forms, our thoughts of them, our memories of them will take us back through memory lane. 
and we're going to feel that sense of nostalgia we're going to feel that sense of you know missing the other person and i feel like for you guys it's going to hit you very very strongly okay because the rest of the time you know you're kind of like the ice queen or the ice king okay you're constantly uh, on guard you're constantly like rational but it's the Mercury retrograde period that will activate more of the emotional side, you know, the suppressed feelings. When you are dealing with this heartache, you bury yourself in work and you suppressed and suppressed and repressed it. And, you know, it's like deep down in your core that that's where all those emotions go. And unfortunately, Mercury retrograde will stir up those feelings that you thought were gone. You thought you have worked through, you thought you have left behind, you thought you have, you know, that you thought have been thrown away. All the all of these things are coming back to the surface. And they're coming back to the surface for purging. They're coming back to the surface for releasing and letting go. And they're coming back not because you need to revisit it because I feel like a lot of Aquarius people believe in signs and synchronicities and believe in, oh, if it's meant to be, it's going to be, you know, like um, you're looking for validation. You're looking for confirmation in your external environment. And I feel like the, the, the Mercury retrograde period is kind of like that final test. You know, it, it's, it's almost like reminding you to remind you how it felt. If you don't like how it felt the first time, you have to let it go. You have to take better care of yourself. You have to honor yourself enough not to put yourself in a situation where the feelings are not reciprocated, okay? So I'm feeling here, there's a tremendous purging and letting go and you know, letting what is not meant for you to kind of release itself okay so what we have here is the ten of wands this is a bundled very tightly wound up burden it's really wound up and um with the green the green deals with you know the the financial resources that i'm seeing here there's a lot on your mind as it relates to finances getting out from under a situation freeing yourself extracting yourself letting yourself be free from this financial uh, entanglement with another person. This bundle is greatly tied up with the tower and the two of pentacles and this lover's card here. This is the card of Gemini here. So I feel like there is a situation where somebody is like of two minds about you. On good days, the connection is very, very good. And on bad days, the connection really is fractured because it's it's laid on top of a very found, a faulty foundation. Okay, so I feel like all of these, um, the Ten of Wands, the Tower, the Two of Pentacles, and the Lovers, this green energy, it deals with the same situation and it deals with the same person. And what I'm feeling is you're at a point where you have to kind of like unwind that really tight bouquet of wands okay this is like it's wound up it's very very tight and it's burdensome and in this situation you're releasing you're freeing you're untying you're unraveling and you're kind of like letting them fall where they they may what i do feel coming into the picture as well is i still feel for many of you you're grappling between two people. The lovers is about choices. It's also about like a third party entering a situation, a, a relationship, or um, like interference in a relationship, okay? So what I'm sensing here is we have here the three of wands, your ship's coming in, uh, the arrival of something, Okay, and it's it's blue in nature, so this indicates to me a lot more of a spiritual connection, a lot more balance, a lot more. Um, this deals more with like the the uh, crown chakra and the the higher chakras, which basically is a mental energy and it's also a spiritual energy. 
a spiritual connection that is also very delicate. We have here the Temperance card. It's like the Two of Cups, where there's more harmony, whereas there's more tenderness. And I also feel like the connection is also, you know, with this butterfly, it's very delicate. Okay, so for some of you, there might be another connection that is more spiritual in nature, more mental in nature, more reciprocal in nature. So I feel like you're freeing yourself from a situation that has been very conflict driven, five of wands, egos, okay? Uh, this is like being at conflict with yourself or dealing with someone who has a lot of, like a big ego. Somebody where it's like, they, they, they get very defensive very, very easily. And Aquarius, you guys are like the water bearer. You um, transmit knowledge, okay? You love to learn. You love to grow through your experiences. And you're like the least defensive sign when it comes to, you know, uh, someone showing you a better way to do things. Someone telling you, you know, here's how you can get better. Here's what you should improve on. Here's what you should do. Like, you're very, very, very receptive to uh, constructive criticism and feedback. But you're dealing with someone who's so conflict-driven, who is very defensive, who's very closed off. They don't want to learn. They're not open-minded. And I feel like the, the, the situation was very conflictual because of their behavior, okay? You thought you were stubborn until you met this person, right? And you thought you were like, you know, fixed in your ways until you met this person. And that's how extreme they are because I feel like they're, they're almost like this really tight bundle, very wound up tight with a lot of responsibilities, with a lot of things on their plate. And I almost feel like you're, you were dealing with someone who had to grow up very, very fast. Um, they definitely neglected their emotional development, you know, and I feel like to this um, person's defense, they did have a lot of redeeming quality, but I feel like it was your love that really carried the weight of this relationship and it left you depleted, okay? So I, I'm sensing here that there's a connection where you had to let go, but then also the other person, um, they're easing up, they're loosening up, they're starting to be, um, they're, they're like approaching you with a lot more reciprocity and a lot more sensitivity, okay? This butterfly, it's not, uh, it doesn't indicate to me flightiness or um, someone who's, who, who's, um, whose feelings are fleeting. I don't, I don't feel that, not with this card. I feel like it's somebody who is a lot more sensitive, a lot more delicate, a lot more like, you know, walking around on eggshells, trying to test the waters with you, trying to figure out how they can make their way back in. So I definitely feel like somebody is really regretful of a situation and how it came to be and how it transpired. And I feel like they're trying to, you know, plaster up this little fracture in the foundation. You're dealing with someone who is trying to, you know, appease or, or fix or trying to um, right a wrong or fix a situation, okay? But the way they go about it is not going to be, you know, in your face, obvious, like, you know, with a tool belt and trying to uh, fix this, the foundation. Um, on the other hand, I do have a person here. This is, we have... The Queen of Cups and the Ten of Cups. And I'm getting the infinity symbol. Okay, so from the Two of Pentacles, we have the green infinity symbol. And now we have a multicolor infinity symbol, which indicates to me completion. It indicates to me, you know, the whole spectrum of the rainbow. Okay. Um, somebody who's like the yin to your yang, somebody who's very complementary to you. Um, different but complementary is, um, those are the words I'm getting, so let me see. Um, I'm hearing as well with the whole fertilization thing. Um, so so the, the bees fertilize, right? So they're, they're fertilizing the flowers. So 
fertility is really big here with this ten of cups so if you're not expecting you know take precautions or if you're not wanting to get pregnant take precautions because i keep hearing like fertilizing and then the whole cycle of life and like um continuity is what i'm seeing like it's an endless seam seamless cycle okay and it's good because it's multicolored. whereas in this situation it was very security oriented and I feel like it depleted you, but this situation is looking really, really good. And um, what we have here is the Queen of Cups, which is, you know, getting your crown back, getting your emotional, the, the, that apex to your emotional satisfaction. So I feel like there is somebody here who has an outpouring of love for you. Somebody who is tremendously, you know, just your cup of tea, okay? And somebody who gives and gives and gives. Um, not that the relationship is one-sided, but I feel like they give because they feel safe in the situation with you. And as hurt as you were over this person, I feel like you're no longer starry-eyed because I feel like there's somebody here that you really, really cared for. And you know, they had a lot of flaws, okay? I'm not gonna lie, this person <laughs> has a lot of flaws but you felt like you know you're it, it was okay you overlooked all of these things whereas this person i feel like you felt safe to give of yourself you feel like even if you give because of this infinity symbol even if you give it comes back tenfold because the other person knows how to reciprocate and like i said before um mercury retrograde is notorious for people from the past coming back into the picture so I feel for many of you, there could potentially be a timing issue where somebody wasn't ready in the past and this situation depleted you and now they are ready. Now they're in a position where they're okay to lead, to, to, to give. Now they're in a position where they, um, they want to give, where they want to replenish, where they understand finally everything that you've been through and I definitely feel there is um, kind of like recognizing, being cognizant of how this cycle didn't work out in the past. And then we're trying to break this cycle and to create something better as a result of it. So there could potentially be a coming back of a situation where you have a really strong spiritual connection, emotional connection, and just a really strong karmic connection too with another person. For whatever reason, they were not in a position. They're all grayed out and, you know, um, I just feel like, you know, they're, they're, they're not in the healthiest or in the best emotional state and they didn't have anything to give and you lend them your colors. Okay. But they might be in a position where they can replenish you and they, they are willing and able to give in this context. Okay. So that's what I'm sensing. Let me see. Oh my gosh, it's about 50 minutes already. So let me see if there's anything else. I was taking notes um, with this with this deck in particular. This is the first month I'm using them. And a lot of images and messages and words just came out. And especially for the Capricorn reading. So I had to like take notes. Um, I just want to say as well. Um, with the the woman who's meditating and she's like, I wonder what so-and-so is up to. And then she, you know, looks at it with her third eye. I feel like you want to be a little bit careful about um, not intruding, you know, not prying, not, um, um, what is the word, like, uh, infringing upon somebody else's privacy. Okay, so I want you to be extra careful about that. Aquarius, air signs in general are deeply, deeply, deeply curious. Okay, and so if you're dealing with another air sign, they might be spying or prying on, on um, or, or trying to figure things out about you. Um, and you likewise, like an open, um, a closed book or a closed box is very uh, fascinating to you, intriguing to you. So you might want to pry, but just be careful of that tendency, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, Aquarius. I hope this reading has been helpful for you guys. And I do wish you all the very best for the month of November. Uh, once again, 
If you are interested in a reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a colleague. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California and she's a psychic and she's really, really good at her craft. I highly recommend that you get a reading if you are looking for spiritual advice and guidance and so forth, okay? Um, I will be back in the month of, well, the end of November for the December reading and I'll try my best to do like a yearly reading for you guys if time permits for 2020. I wish you all the best, okay? Take care of yourself. Have a wonderful, amazing Thanksgiving and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.